Look, a reindeer is just a gay moose. So, say it's not. Let's go. I'm just sitting on your front porch Wondering how could I be so far from my Oh, come in. And my mind is somewhere else, but when I find it, I'll patch up where it's been blown. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this. Of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wild Shine that light on me oh. I'll sit and tell you my story Find a song, I'll sing it just for you. <laughs> and that is Shine by Bishop Gunn right there. And uh, and it is February 24 in the year 2020. Man, we're getting into the future, aren't we? You know, a lot of people didn't think we'd get this far into the future. Like, I think if you dug up some people who are deceased or something and you said, hey, 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 wake up. Hey, wake up. How far in the future you think we'll go? I bet a lot of them would not have picked this far. But we're making it. We're making progress. That is a uh, shine by Bishop Gunn. And some bad news came out of their camp uh, last week that the band has canceled future dates as of right now. And is taking a bit of a, a break, a sabbatical. I don't know what their plans are. Um, I tried to get in touch with with uh, with my little nephew over there to see what was going on with them, but hadn't gotten too much information, and that's where we are. But man, I would hate to see uh, see them not be able to make it happen because they got a beautiful little outfit, beautiful little musical outfit right there, and that's Bishop Gunn. Just back from Toronto, oh, I want to thank everybody who came out. That was just fire. Man, it might have been some of the most hyped crowds. I mean, people just, one dude out there, he was just so fired up, dude. He had a, um, he was, he, he had, I think was just donating his own blood into a bag and just threw a bag of it up on the stage. Wow. AB positive, let's go. People were hype. Man, it was magical, man. We have four shows over there at the Queen Elizabeth Theater. Sold them out. And thank you so much, Canada, beautiful Canada, for coming out. And people I notice in Canada, it's so friendly. Like, people apologize all the time. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. One guy came across a parking lot. I would never even... Seen him or not, he goes, oh, sorry. In case I, he's like, case I ever bump into you, I'm sorry. I was like, what? It's almost like people are just trying to be out or they're like, they're like, they're trying to have like a polite off. Like, oh, you think you're sorry, bro? I'm sorry. Dude, I'm, and I, and I don't mean sorry, like as in incapable or um, not going to fare well or not going to do something well. I mean, sorry, as in, oh, uh, oh, my bad, you know, oh, it's okay, you know, oh, eh, but yeah, they're like, oh, sorry, and they're like, oh, you think I'm sorry, my, I got a friend that's even sorrier, oh, oh, this guy, he's so, he, he, oh, he apologized, 
He apologize always, always. He's so apologetic. I'm the most apologetic motherfucker around. People just like, I'm sorry. Jumping off buildings, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess, uh, but anyway, people just so polite. Had a good time, man. Just such a great time. And thank everybody uh, for coming out and enjoying it. And enjoying the, just the joy, man. Just the sheer joy in that theater. In that theater. And uh, what else? I'm home. I'm headed this week to uh, Red Bank, New Jersey on February 27th. That's Thursday. Oxon Hill, Maryland, February 28th. And Newport News, Virginia, February 29th. Um, Those are sold out. And then we got the Castle Theater on March 7th in Maui. And the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville on April 17th. And um, there are still tickets for Maui. I believe that Nashville is sold out. So that's crazy, man. I can't believe I'm going to get to go to the Ryman. Dude, People, some people treat their dogs like a slave. You notice it? So I went to the park this morning to get a little bit of heat, a little free heat from the sunshine, you know, a little bit of that vitamin D straight from the vitamin G-O-D. You feel me? I'm talking straight off the tit of the Lord, the sky, and just catch that free heat right in my face and neck. And I went over there and I was just sitting in in the grass making me a little gratitude list and doing a couple etchings and stuff on a, um, on one of those legal pads, you know? And this man, I heard this old man, he's like, Char-, he goes, Charlie, get over here. Char, Charlie, get over here. And I thought it was too, you know, kind of drug induced or, you know, drug induced homosexual men doing, a, you know, splitting up a, you know, a gram or a, a vial of a, a vial of speed. But then I look over and this man, who I'll be honest, this man looked like duty, bro. This man looked like just man, just real, just, just duty, duty. And he's yelling at this dog. Because the dog smelled something or saw this. And the dog, he's over there, he's investigating. You know, he might have a little bit of hound in him or a little bit of a investigator gadget or whatever that guy's name was. Remember that show? But the, the the dog, he's you know, he's sniffing on an orange peel or doing something, you know, or smelling a um, you know, a park needle or something or whatever. And a man's like, Sharks, get over! Here! Just yelling at him. And Charlie, first of all, Charlie was way healthier. This man looked like just first of all, looked like somebody had shaved his whole body with like a one. Or like a one and a half. He had a fade like on his arms, shoulders, everything. Great, just real bristly looking dude. Kind of guy, you. he looked like he was like a pipe cleaner. You know what I remember pipe cleaners? Remember in school sometime, if you was one of the weirdo kids and they at the art class, they would give you these pipe cleaners and say, hey, do something with this. And you'd be like, well, what do I do? They'd be like, ah, oh, we don't know, just do something. We hoping you graduate soon because nobody could stand you, you know? And, um, and yeah, this dude, I'm thinking, man, this dog. And then, so then the dog comes over by me and now I'm kind of pissed because I'm sitting there trying to do a little bit of, um, legal work or whatever, you know, writing stuff and drawing. And this man's Charlie, leave him alone. So I said, dude, I said, Charlie ain't messing with me, man. I said, you messing with me by yelling. You messing with everybody, sir. And fuck it, just, I don't know, man. I, and the dog went over to him, and I just felt like, I don't know, when Charlie left, dude, I felt like, damn, bro. Charlie don't want to be with that man, and that man treats him bad. That's how I felt, dude. So, but yeah, Charlie was like a big dog. And I'll be honest, I slipped him a piece of Nicorette. So, Charlie fucking get that hit from daddy right there. So that guy can kiss my ass, bro. What I'm saying is you can't, your dog is not a slave. He doesn't work for you. Okay? You can't, you know, say this. Do this. Charlie, get in the house. No ham hocks, Charlie. Nothing for you. 
You can't be like that to an animal. You got to treat an animal a little bit kinder, I think. But I don't know. I don't know their backstory. This shit just made me mad. I don't see a lot of animals and stuff. So, um, in, in here in Los Angeles, so it just made me kind of kind of upset. But anyway, what's going on, man? Good to be here. I feel a little bit rattled. It has been all over the place, and um, and I'm so excited that uh, that we got these shows coming up this weekend. These are makeup dates. And just happy to be getting them done. These are the last of the makeup dates except for Brea. And we'll do them sometime. Um, What did I see on the Washington Post the other day put up a thing? Oh, they were talking about... So Bernie Sanders is out there whooping people's ace, right? On the circuit. On the political circuit. And I'm not much of a political. I never... You know, ever since I was young, I've never... I've never thought a politician is or a politics going to save my life. Them dudes ain't doing shit for us. You know, I've always thought if my bed's going to be better, I'm going to have to make it that way. You know, if I'm going to have a little bit of a, uh, you know, if I'm going to have a little bit more nut in my scrot, you know, a little bit of, a little bit more gumption in my scrotum, you feel me, then I'm, I'm going to be the have to want to put it in there. I'm not relying on the government or something to make my life uh, better. But uh, but it just blew my mind how suddenly they came out with a report that now that Bernie Sanders is winning in the Democratic, you know, uh, regionals or whatever it's called, semifinals or whatever, but um, that Russia is helping him. And I'm just like, you got to be kidding me with this shit. You got to be kidding me. You telling me that this dude, that every time somebody starts winning, Russia helps them? It's just the worst excuse, man. It just made me like, it was just like, it's almost like sometimes the news thinks that we're so dumb. It's like, you really think I'm dumb enough to believe this? The last time Donald Trump was winning? Oh, oh, Russia helped him. Oh, this time Bernie said, oh, Russia helped him. It's like whoever they don't like, they make up this story. I don't know, man. It just blew my mind. I was like, do you really think? Maybe humans are that dumb. Maybe I'm Maybe I'm dumb for thinking that we're not. It just, and how is, how is, how is a country helping somebody win an election? They put ads, say if, even to say if they do put an advertisement on internet. If they don't go in there and pull the uh, the arm, the volt, the, what is it called? If they don't pull the poll or whatever for you, if they don't tab you, the vo- if they don't do the voting for you, then they're not doing, nobody could do shit. Unless they're making robots and send them, them in there dressed up. Like people, oh, I'm just here to vote. Charlie, get off or get away from that guy. Anyway, that shit just had me riled off. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Now you think that just because this guy's winning that they're going to, that the Russia, it just made me, it's like, oh, I just wish somebody would just, you almost wish somebody would just burn down one of these news places because it's just bullshit, man. But what are we to do, man? What are we to do? I got nothing. Oh, what else happened this weekend? Let's take a let's hit the hotlines. People called in from the Toronto show, and I'd love to hear some thoughts and some uh, some reactions. And um, uh, here we go. Hi, Daniel. This is Lisa calling. Uh, my friend and I were lucky enough to see you Friday night in Toronto for the early show. Oh, thank you for coming out there, Lisa. And you got a friend too. I'm glad you and your friend came. And that's nice if you got a friend, you go do something. Oh, me and my friend are doing this. Oh, we're having a, we're splitting a cabbage. We're splitting a, um, you know, we're doing a tandem bike. So, um, onward. And um, I just had to call in to say we had so much fun uh, just laughing our heads off. Um, everybody around us has just doubled over laughing. I mean, I've been to a lot of shows, but I've never laughed that hard <laughs> at a comedy show. 
but genuine question when you're up. And look, and I hate to interrupt you, but sometimes the laughter, it, it could, it'll bring it out of you. It's that it's almost like an exorcism, but a good one. It'll make something come out of you, a, a secret. Sometimes people laugh so hard they t- they tell a, a, a truth about themselves. They let a secret loose. Some guy the other day he laughed so hard at the show and he's just like he came out of the closet. He's like, I'm gay. And his buddy's like, Patrick, dude, what are you talking about, Patrick? Have another beer, man. Your wife's gonna pick us up in about twenty minutes, dude. She's gonna be pissed, bro. Have two beers, Patrick, and calm down, bro. You're going to be fine. You got to get back to your wife and kids, man. So you don't know. Somebody, you know, somebody, sometimes that giggle will just wiggle something right out of you. It'll just shake a truth right out of your freaking lie booth, right out of the back of your brain. You'll just be like, I killed somebody with a shovel. Like, I love licorice. People just, you know. I, I don't wash my husband's clothes, but I tell him I do. So he's always wearing dirties. You know, you just, pe- the, sometimes when that laughter gets you, Lisa, it can really shake something out of you. It can shake the mainframe, and that's when maybe a little dribble of some truth will just leak out of your feet. You know, you suddenly, you'll, suddenly you'll slip in a fact about yourself that you never wanted to admit. Oh, I, I like the smell of my own ass. You know, something or something like that. You know, sometimes you'll just, a truth will pop, oh, just, just whip right out of you. That you don't want, you know. Uh, <laughs> I've been saving all my back hair that I shave off in a bag under the sink in my bathroom. Ah! You know, it just, that's what can happen. Uh, my, t- my tits smell like tangerines. <laughs> So anyway, a lot of truths and 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 non uh, and, and old secrets can come just re- just avalanching out of your freaking uh, brain stem. Let's hear more, Lisa. Up on stage, can you hear how hard we're laughing? Like, are you able to get that positive feedback from us? Because I mean, every sentence you were saying at one point, everybody was just dying laughing. Man, it was it was just incredible. So thank you so much for coming to our neck of the woods. Thanks for everything. Well, you guys have a beautiful neck of the woods up there in Toronto. And I, and I never thought Canada was real when I was young. And I've said that before. Drop my keys. Um, you know, I thought I thought if you died in Canada, you woke back up in America. That's something that I thought or that I'd heard or that I just thought and then pretended like I'd heard. You know, I thought maybe um, or Canada was just a place that they practice safety equipment. Like if you ever saw a helmet or some knee pads or, uh, you know, if you was at doing the bumper bowling and they had the special lanes on the side for the kind of the kids that had a hit of that tism or just youngsters that wasn't used to pushing ball. And you say, oh, all, all that's from Canada. But. Um, as far as the laughter goes, you know, it's really, you can, what can you hear? Yeah, sometimes I feel like I talk too fast and I step on people's laughter. Um, in a comedy club, I'm so used to that. I'm more used to the area. And so I know how to manage that room size of a room better when it's about 300. But in some of these theaters, you get upwards, you know, a thousand, two thousand. It gets tricky, and I can't see anything when I'm up there. I can see maybe the first two rows, kind of, and then it's just lights. It, it seemed like somebody. You ever been outside and somebody's pulling a boat up on a dock, and you're like, "Oh, are they going to park this thing, or are they just going to shine that light in my eye for an hour?" It's like that. It's like two people are parking boats, but none of them will park. They're just, it's like, okay, park your boat, shut off the light. Or it's like two motorcycles coming at you diagonally and the light are just hitting you. So you can't see anything. You kind of have this light in your eyes. So sometimes it feels like you're performing to, it's almost like it's an experiment or something. Like there's just, 
you hear like a la- like a, 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 a kind of like the sound of laughter, but mostly you just see these two lights and you feel like you're just performing into nothing almost. Um, it's really bizarre. So sometimes it's nice at the end of the show or sometimes in the beginning, the, the, the light man will pull the, will bring the lights up for a second and then you can see everyone and it's, it is a 180 from what you've been seeing the whole time. So sometimes people will react or do something in the audience. And if I don't react to it, I can't see it. I have no idea what's going on most of the time. Uh, but, but man, it was so much fun. There was one moment where they brought the lights up. It was on Saturday, I think. And, and man, I felt like, what did I, I I just felt people were having so much fun and cheering. It man, it just, I don't know. I just felt, it doesn't feel like it's for me, I guess it just feels like people are having a good time. But it felt, just felt cool. It was like, wow, this is something just fun to be a part of. So I'm just glad you guys had a good time, Lisa. I'm glad you and your friend came out and um, and enjoyed each other's company. You know, there is something nice after the show if I get to see some people and stuff. And just, you know, knowing people had fun, man, it means a lot. You know, we had a young one young gentleman that's Italian. Um, and we used to call Italians, we'd call them head lice when I was young because they showed up in groups and kind of bothered you. But uh, this beautiful young Italian, he had a tall friend with him, real long Italian, one of the male eyes. And they, uh, he came to four shows. And I think he had just knocked his girl up, beautiful young fellow. I'm not sure what his name was, Tito or something. or t- uh, and, and I don't know. Antigua, I have no idea, but I can't remember, but very nice young man. Knock on wood. I don't know what his name is, but, and I don't know what, not, I don't even know why I'm knocking on wood. Um, what else? But that was good. It was a good time there. Let me hit, let me hit this other hotline call. Came in 985-664-9503. What's up, Theo? I'm here with my friend, Sam. Hey, what's up, Theo? Gang, gang. What's up, Sam? Gang, brother. And uh, there's a lot of people named Sam in Canada, I realize that, onward. We just drove from Montreal to see a show in Toronto, the Friday night show to be specific. And bro, there's some fucking asshole in, right behind us arguing and yelling and stuff. Uh, I don't know what happened, but you kind of addressed it. You said, <laughs> the person, you're like, what's going on? And then the person said something like, cut. And you're like, oh, you're cutting your stuff? And the crowd just died. But it was a great show, man. Uh, I don't know. There's people walking around and shit, but like, don't let that get in the way. That was that was dope. Um, yeah, I just want to know what, how, how you felt about the show because I remember at one point you kind of stressed out. And you know, what do you what do you got to say, Sam? I don't know. We love you, Theo Vaughn, and we're here to support you. So uh, let us know what you think. Thanks, man. Gang, gang, gang voice. E gang, gang. Uh Dude, thank you guys for driving, man. And I hope y'all made it home safe, man. And if you didn't make it home safe, then you're you're in heaven, bro. So either way, you won it. Um, man, it was wonderful. You know, Canada, the, the, the general feeling I have when I'm in Canada is such a feeling of safety. You know, I don't, I, in America, I feel like there's always a little bit of uncomfort. I feel like it's, and maybe it's just because I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in like really the devil's den here. I'm out here in the damn devil's dimple just feeling him grin and whenever he wants. Um but in Canada there's just there's just a friendliness. There's a not everything has like a wage to it. Not everything has like a like a like there's just something more genuine about it. It's really really it's so pleasant to be around. Um So yeah, dude, I just had I had such a great time. I mean, I had such a great time just going out and people are just, they're having a good time. There's, there's just, there's more of an ease in people. It's like somebody just put a, you know, two cans of ease and just squeezed it right into somebody, everybody's neck. Everybody's just eased up. Not like that guy at the park who's like, get out, Charlie, build me a shed or whatever that guy was, dude, they, they need a police need to get that man. Because he's treating that dog like a damn indentured servant. But, uh, but yeah, man, it was just a blast, man. 
it was just it was just I'm trying to think of a better way to describe it. But I mean, my stress level has been high, man. I can I, I really can't wait to take a break. You know, I used to feel. You know, honestly, I used to feel a lot more dialed in. Even when I was doing the podcast, it was easier for me to connect and to kind of drop into what was going on. Um, but I've just, I have just been under a lot of just, just stress, just a lot of the traveling and stuff. And I don't talk about it sometimes, even though I do a lot, I feel like, because once you kind of start doing well, I feel like once you start having some success, nobody wants to hear you complain, really. Nobody, you know, it's like, so it's sometimes that kind of, that stuff, it's t- it's a little tough for me to talk about the, some of that stuff recently because I, uh, I feel like nobody wants to hear the dude that's doing well. Nobody wants to hear him complain. Um, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I'm trying to take more methods to deal with some of my stress a little bit. You know, I flew in a day early into Toronto so that I wasn't jammed up on the same day of the, uh, show having to travel and then go straight to the show. Um, I'm going to go to Maui in a few weeks and hopefully have some few days to just get connected to nature. Just stretch out, be an ostrich, put, put my legs into the sand and be like that maybe. Maybe see so, you know, a tit in the distance or something. You know, maybe I'll bring Charlie with me if I see a nice tit in the distance, have him go get it. Char, Char! Go, go, go. Man, that guy, dude. I'm going to start calling Charlie next time. I'm going to impersonate the guy. I'm going to hide behind the tree in the distance. And when he says something to Charlie, I'm going to say something to him. Hey, you're doing fine, Charlie. You're doing great. You got the day off. Um, Let's take one more call that came in right here. Onward. Hey, Theo, what's popping off? It's Dingo out here in central Oklahoma. What's up, Dingo? Thank you for calling, man. That's a rare name, brother. But then, um, but then what? Onward? I was just scrolling through Facebook and I saw, uh, kind of a heartbreaking post that, uh, Bishop Gunn was going to be halting all activity. I guess they're going through some struggle. Um, I thought since you're the guy that introduced them to us, I would give you a call and see what your thoughts are. And, you know, I hope that they hear this and know that, you know, there's a lot of people that care a lot about them. And we hope they can work out whatever it is that they're going through and come back to us, you know. Uh, anyways, love you, Theo. You're the best, man. And uh, you can do it. You're good enough. You worked all your life for it. Thanks, man. Thank you, bro. It was nice. Uh, nice. That was nice of you to say that. Um, yeah, man. It really makes me sad, dude. You know, I saw that post as well on Facebook, and uh, yeah, it just you know, I want the band to. They're so good, man. I really believe they're so good. You know, and they've worked so hard. And they've done so many shows. And I think some of the str- stuff that, from what I, from my perception, it seemed like some of the stuff they're struggling with is just internally between them. And they're trying to figure it out. And uh, I hope that they do, man. Um, you know, I don't want to take words out of their mouth. I asked, I asked Burn Sharp, the drummer, if he would call in today. And I don't think he was up for it. So I'm going to see if he'll check in next week and maybe give us a little bit more information. Um, But yeah, just heartbreaking. Heartbreaking, man. It just shows you how rare something. When something's good, it's rare. Man, when something is good, it is rare. And then you think there's going to be, oh, this, this could happen again easily. Or this could happen again in a moment. You know, something else could happen. Something better. But we don't want to, it's, it's not that we don't want to settle, but it's why, I wonder why we don't know, why we aren't able to notice when something is really perfect. And I struggle with it. You know, I think there's going to be something different. Oh, I've got, you know, maybe there's a better opportunity or maybe there's someone better. 
Um, but thanks for saying I'm good enough, man. I appreciate that. You know, it's funny. Sometimes when I'm on the stage and and and, I, and the lights come up a little and people are cheering, it feels I feel like like almost like turning around and looking behind me. It's like who? What are they? Cla- um, is there some like is somebody? <laughs> Uh, you know, is what is this for? You know, it just, I mean, I know that, that people are there and they're excited and, and they're excited to see the show and stuff, but I don't know. It's interesting, man. But yeah, I hope Bishop Gunn gets it together, man. I really, you know, I love the vibe that they have and just, they got this soul. They got this soul and it's. Maybe if you have a thought about that, well, I'm going to get to the hotline call about practice and kissing and how people did it in just a second. But if you, if it was, if there was something good in your life, if there was something, when you had something really good and you let it go, or you thought there'd be something different, or you thought there'd be something better, or maybe a, because our ego can be so dangerous. You know, the ego is, you know, our ego starts running before we've passed the baton a lot of times. And I just want to, maybe, and maybe nobody will have anything, but if you do, hit the hotline with that, 985-664-9503. And, um, and I love you guys, man. I just want to tell you that. I love you, and thank you. Uh, you know, one thing I, I just, I, I don't know, man, I've just, you know, you guys have all helped make my dream come true, you know, to be able to make people laugh at a big at a level and if this is the greatest my career ever gets and this has been amazing and um you know i just feel really blessed uh but i'm realizing it takes a group really to make a blessing you know um so gang <sighs> i want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by power dot and you can see this sweet item right now if you're on the YouTubes there. Now, Power Dot is a specialty item here. And, it, you know, one of the worst things about working out and training and being real aggressive and just pumping your body and making your body pump hard and pump blood and get muscle right is the recovery. Because if you think about it, imagine if you could tear open your skin, you'd see all your, your muscles would all be laying in beds and having Gatorade. And probably doing uh, salt suppositories and whatever they could to reha- rehabilitate themselves quickly. But one thing that can help that is uh, clinically proven uh, muscle stimulation. And that's where Power Dot comes in. These people know what they're doing over there. Power Dot puts a modern spin on clinically proven muscle stimulation, it's the first of its kind. It's built around an intuitive mobile app that provides the user with great preset programs designed to speed up recovery, improve athletic performance, reduce pain, and rehab from injury. It comes, it's your stem cell package, man. Not stem cell, but it's your cell stem package. This thing will stimulate your muscle cells. I mean, you could always spend a ton of money after you've worked out and hire a masseuse, or you can create your own and control your own. With the different pads, you can put them on different parts of your body. You can be at the office and rehabbing that sore quad. You could be, I mean, hell, you could pack nine of them onto your, onto your butt and put in that booty work. And stimulate that body, that butt body area. Tighten up that back butt. You can do it all. Traveling with Power Dot is extremely convenient. By removing the control unit and connecting via Bluetooth to your mobile phone. The actual unit itself fits easily into the palm of your hand. It comes with all the pads you need. It comes with the app to connect to your phone. It's simple and it's effective. It's used by the best in the world throughout the NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL, and MLS. That's soccer. Even Tour de France cyclists and CrossFit athletes use PowerDot. Control your own recovery. And for our listeners, PowerDot offers U.S. customers a free 30-day trial plus an additional 20% off. That's right. 
just for this past weekend listeners. Go to powerdot.com slash Theo. That's P-O-W-E-R-D-O-T dot C-O-M slash T-H-E-O. And use the code Theo at checkout for 20% off your order. That's powerdot.com slash Theo. And use code Theo for 20% off your order. Rehab yourself. Get it done. Power dot. Look, do you want a little, do you want a spoonful of brisket sometimes at 1130 a.m.? Do you want somebody to drive by your house and just hum a creme brulee right into the back of your jaw or into your back jaw? You know what I'm talking about, Postmates. Why not have somebody on a bicycle come by and just frisbee a pancake right into your fat stepmother's gullet? When you need red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 6.30, and a breakfast burrito at 9.30, and ibuprofen at 10.15, well, obviously, something's wrong with you. But something's also right with you because you're using Postmates. Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever kind of delivery service all year round. Don't you want something, Charlie? Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the U.S. and offer delivery from all the restaurants, grocery and convenience stores, and traditional retailers, and all you could possibly want or need. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. That is as much time as we know. Postmates will bring you whatever you need within the hour. Download the app for iOS and Android for free. Browse restaurants and businesses locally and track your delivery in real time. You can see, oh, where is um, Haradesh? Oh, he's a half a block away. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. Support this past weekend. Try Postmates if you haven't. To start your free deliveries, download the app and use code WEEKEND. That's code WEEKEND for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Anything you need, any time you need it, Postmate it. Download Postmates and save with code WEEKEND. Support the podcast if you can. Thank you guys for all the love. Now, last week we was talking about kissing, smooching. And I talked about a couple of things when I was young. You know, when I was young, not everybody knew how to kissing people was it wasn't it weren't the first way you knew to say hey to somebody. First, when you they teach you the handshake. And that's basically saying, hey, let me touch you real quick. Let me touch you. Say, OK, I'll let you touch me, but just my hand. I say, OK, that's an agreement. That's a handshake. And then they do a hug. Hey, I'm going to trust you enough to put both your hands around the around and touch my back really quick while I touch your back. OK, and go. Boom. Uh, uh, OK, that was good. And then it gets to another level, though, when your body starts to get hot, when your loins start to look around, you feel me? Because when you're a man and you're young, you can only look around with your head and your neck. But at a certain age, your wiener says, hey. I'm about to peek around as well. And that is called, uh, what is it called? Shit, I don't know. Um, uh, puberty. That's almost full puberty, baby. That's when you're getting lit, bruh. That's when you suddenly lit for some tit, dude. But what I'm telling you is this, what I'm trying to say. Is that we all started practicing away kissing. I shared about mine last week. And so you guys had some calls that came in. And I want to hear a couple of those. Here we go, gang. Hi, Theo. This is MoFo from Idaho. What's up, MoFo? What's up, MoFo from Idaho? And uh, Idaho is a good place if you want to, uh, if you want to get kind of wind burn on your face and sunburn at the same time. And if you want to look for gold but not find any but still dress like you look for gold, then Idaho is a beautiful spot. Great place to get sunburnt and uh, and go missing as well. A lot of missing people in Idaho. Onward. So I'm the youngest of six, so I had older siblings. And we had a Barbie head that was like a head and shoulders and neck. So you could do her hair and her makeup like it was like a mannequin head. So... 
when I would get a chance to be alone with this Barbie, <laughs> I would practice kissing. I think we're alone now. There doesn't mean to be anyone around. Okay. So you kissed that little baby, uh, that baby Barbie. Let me hear more. On her neck and her face and everything. And Damn, this shit turning me on a little. Well, I'll be honest with you, dude. Dang, this shit got me working, dude. This shit's going to bring old Patrick out the closet. You feel me, man? This shit got me going. Let's hear more. I'm going to back it up a little bit in a second here. You tell me what happened again. Onward. The chance to be alone with this Barbie, <laughs> I would practice kissing on her neck and her face and everything. And it always, it never failed. Every time I went to do that, one of my siblings would catch me and be like, Mo, are you kissing the Barbie's neck? And I'd be so fucking embarrassed. And <laughs> so that would just go on and on. And also, uh, you know, the poles in the basement. I used to put on my roller skates and, like, swing around the poles and practice kissing on those. And, again, somebody would always catch me and be like, what? Are, are you kissing the pole? Anyway, so funny. Uh, yeah, I can't, look, everybody's got a way. You know, that's interesting. You kissing plastic uh, humans and you kissing poles. You know, that's really, you could work at the mall. I'm, I mean, it almost sounds like you could work at the mall. Um, but yeah, there's, everybody had a different way. You know, some people would do something different, man. I had this boy live across the street from us named Robert and he would put his hand in hot water and get it real hot. And he would make that kind of kissing area, like a little lips with his hand where you put your, curl your fingers and your thumb across the front. And then he would kind of kiss that when it was all warm. You know, everybody had a little something. We would heat up the oyster. You know, every now and then things got a little bit homosexual with the kid. You know, if it's young fellas, they're kissing on each other's neck a little. But when you're when you're a child, anything gay is not gay. Gay is just children. You know, I remember finding I, I found two of my nephews one time in the bed, and they in there butt naked. So what am I gonna? Uh, you know, they're children. And one of them had a bunch of damn uh little uh, Hershey's Kisses in there with them. He had a whole damn stack, a couple of them on his belly and stuff starting to, and some of them were melting a little bit and the chocolate was getting on his skin. But what am I going to, you know, that's nothing. That's children. All right, let's take another call that came in here. Hey, Theo, this is Colt. Uh, I used to practice kissing on an apple. I would take a bite. I would take a, like, a little, like a little nibble out of the apple. And then, you know, it would leave like a little hole for like, a, you know, you could put your tongue in there. And Damn, boy. Man, that shit got me feeling some type of way. You know, you see you out there getting that fruit, dog. Putting your tongue into that fruit, boy. You could have at least had a little bit, you know, you could have cut open an orange, bro, and perved out into that sucker. I used to do that when I got a little bit older. I'd dig out the middle of an orange and throw three of my fingers in that bastard. Let's hear more. And it was kind of a sweet treat at the same time. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of how I used to practice kissing when I was young, and uh, I really like the podcast, man. I really like your, uh, I really like your content, and uh, just keep keep doing you, baby boy. Gang, thanks, Colt. I like that. I like a man named after a weapon as well, Colt. You know, or maybe uh, who else? Um, uh, Ninja Star. And if you don't think there's probably a young black woman out there named Ninja Star, then you're probably wrong, baby girl. Uh, kissing on an apple. Let's hit. Let's take another one that came in. How you practiced getting that lip locking going, gang? Hey Theo, I'm calling all the way from Pennsylvania. Damn, from PA, and that's Amish country. If you want to see what uh, your grandparents did, drive through PA, man. You get out there, out near, uh, what are some of those areas out there where they got, I mean, you can smell the butter, you can smell the breast milk in the air. I mean, these women got some breasts on them, too. That's the breast belt. Do you be driving, you hit a speed, like, what is that, a speed bump on the interstate? You'd be like, nah, man, that's just a couple titties crossing the road out there. Because it's that kind of place, man. And they got skin just so milky, my God. That milky skin. 
I mean, just make you want to just, I mean, god damn, every titty look like a damn. Ooh. Every titty looks big and good out there. But there's nothing like a real milky uh, breast. You know, a lot of times they try to push these days, they push these different type of breasts, this and that, you know. Oh, here's that lean titty, rock witty. What? A lean titty? People want the breast. The breast is supposed to be the breast, you know. You know, I remember when I was growing up, we had a lady that worked at the, at the, it, this lady, we live in an apartment for a little bit, and it was four apartments in one big building. And we would play football in the backyard, out back, and they had this, that big area, and we'd get out there and just be our, just pretend we were heroes, you know. And you had different, you know, you had a hole in a certain part. You had to go around and they had drainage coming off of somebody's laundry room. So you had to be careful. And if somebody was running their dryer, that hot air was puffing out of one area. So that's where we would do the intros at the beginning of the game. We say, oh, starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. And your boy would come running out of that dryer smoke from the, by the laundry room. <laughs> and then we played a game but they had a lady who did a uh, verbal sex work by us and she was like a hotline worker back in the day they used to have a if you call the on the phone line you dial 1900 big titty or something a woman would answer and she'd be like yeah yeah you know this is uh this is diane you know this is Diane uh, breast or something like that. You know, this big titty. What can I do for you? And she would sit there and she would like, t oh, yeah, let me, I'm, a, I'm taking your pants off right now. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, I'm choking you right now. Oh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm uh, spitting in your belly button. You're like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm hiding olives in your ass, you know. They get real nasty and stuff. But she was doing verbal sex work, and every minute she kept the person on the line, she would uh, get more money for the family. But one of her windows, her window was down by the other end zone where we played football, so you didn't even want to go score down there sometimes when she was getting real vulgar, you know. She'd be like, oh, I got three olives. I got three olives in my ass, you know. You're like, oh, I gotta, I'm making martinis in, in between my tats. You know, she'd be just getting crazy. Oh, yeah. She'd be down there, yeah, give it to me. You're like, what is going on? All right, let's take this call that came in right here. Here we go. Hey, Theo, I'm calling all the way from Pennsylvania. And uh, this regards to your last podcast about practicing your kissing. And uh, I used to take a nice juicy soft mango just bite a little small mouth hole in the side of it and start making out with a mango let me know what you think dang boy you sound like a pervert bucko what do you you sound like dude you doing something wild a mango first of all mango is the straight up slut of produce you gotta think that Man, you you think when other when tomatoes see a mango coming, they ain't saying, "Oh, look at this thought over here." You dude, think about that. You don't think when two peaches they sitting around, they on the swing set, just peaching, you know, maybe splitting up a Percocet or something, and then they see this match mango get out of a taxi. You know, they both thinking, oh, look at this over here. Charlie, get over here, Charlie. I'm telling you, bro, mango is a straight sleut of the fruit kingdom. Gang, bro, thank you for calling, man. And get out your mama's refrigerator, bro. You sound like you got to stay home if you being like that. Onward. Hey, Theo, this is Old Dunn. I'm out in the Bay Area, California. I was just listening. What's up, Old Dunn? Thank you for calling, brother. Onward to your podcast and it made me think of how I used to practice kissing. I used to make out with my elbow pit 
on the inside of my forearm. And I used to get it. I used to fucking give it hickeys and everything, dude. Mm -hmm. That was my shit. I think I did it for like a year. Everybody knows he did it for way longer, too, even though you, he, you just said that. But onward, brother. And then, um, I don't know why I stopped doing it, but I hadn't thought about that in many years. Thank you. Keep up the good work. I love the positive uh, uh, message you bring uh, with the humor attached. Gang, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling, man. Look, dude, you're making me think... Uh I have a limited neck. My neck, I got a medium, medium to lower neck. You can bear if I, if I look for something, I can't look real long because I gotta, I gotta bring my neck back to center. I gotta recenter my neck. Some people got that neck. They over here. They over there. They doing laundry. They looking for this. You know, what I'm saying they own a lost and found. They could, they could do multitask with that fucking big reacher, with that fifth fucking limb, baby. That neck. But my shit, limited time. I got that limited look piece, baby. So I couldn't, I couldn't really get into the crease of my arm, my uh, elbow very much. But I bet I did try that. Let me try it. Oh yeah! Now that's the second I put my face there. I remember I definitely did. Oh yeah, man. Damn. Dude, and my dude, my elbow crease tastes like it remembers me, dude. I'll be honest with you, boy. Damn, this this chick is fine as hell, dude. And I remember even this, dude. This is so perverse. I can't even believe I'm telling you this. Uh, as I got older, sometimes, oh man, sometimes my underarm would had the vibe, the scent of a woman to it. And I would sometimes put my face right down in there and like get a couple of huffs off my own. Off that own my own fucking little reach crevice right there, that armpit, and then I would use that. You know, I'd fuel myself to pleasure myself. You know, and, and uh, and do masturbation. <sighs> so, damn, almost wish I hadn't said that, but you know what? Whatever, man. That's who I am. That's who I am, dude, because I wanted that full body experience because sometimes one of my underarms, one of my underarm always smell a little bit, got that spaghetti, kind of that Italian, you know, it's something under there. And I'm running like a primavera, you feel me? But every now and then one of my underarms had a bit of more of a kind of a fertile, feminine kind of, you know, uh, it kind of had the, it kind of had the same tenor the same kind of uh the same hit that you could get the same hit off of it you would off of a woman's body and even maybe a vagina even if i'm being real honest with you and i know this is gross and i know this is kind of graphic man i'm sorry about that i'm not trying to be disgusting i'm just trying to be honest with you but uh but so i get a couple hits of that and then i would use that Cause that would get my brain all fired up with that hot pouch, you know. It would just it, it fueled that because I would have that that vit that uh the scent. I had that scent of a woman right under my arm. That whoa, you know. And so I get a couple hits of that, and then use that to power my my uh my ability to touch myself. But yeah, man, we all did something, and it's okay. That's nature. There's nothing wrong with you, and there's nothing wrong with me, man. We got a couple more that came in. And I got to tell you about this last ad for the episode. When you're selling online, getting your orders out can be a real pain. Oh, what's that pain? Oh, that's getting my orders out. How do you keep track of who gets what? What carrier should you use? Are you getting the best rates? That's why you need ShipStation.com. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks and you'll be managing your orders printing out labels, and getting your product out fast to keep your customers happy. ShipStation makes it easy. ShipStation helps you get orders out, save money on shipping costs, and keep your customers happy. No matter what you're selling on Amazon, Etsy, eBay, your own website, it brings all your orders into one simple interface. 
no more going to PayPal and printing out the thing and taping it to this. And then where does this go? And then who do I, now I got to run them all over to the post office. You can put it all together. Simple interface. Take your shipping to the next level. It works with all the major carriers, including USPS, FedEx, UPS, even Amazon Fulfillment. No wonder ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. And right now, this past weekend, listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use offer code THEO. There's absolutely no risk. You can start your free trial without even entering your credit card info. Just visit ShipStation.com and click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in THEO. That's ShipStation.com. Use code THEO. ShipStation. Make ship happen. Oh, these are good, man. Let's take another one right here. How you got that smooch? How you got that smooch practice? Because, look, some guys lucked out. Some fancy guys, if you was real rich, maybe your mom come downstairs and give you a little kiss or something to stay heavy with you if you had a stepmom. Maybe she sleep over once a month or something. You're like, damn, I don't even know what dad's for. He's just a bank. Because I'm the one, uh, me and Rhonda are seeing each other now. But before, But if that wasn't your case, then you had to learn to kiss somewhere. And if somebody wasn't kissing you, you had to find a way. And that's who I am. And I appreciate you being similar. Let's go. Hey, Theo. I'm calling about the uh, practicing kissing when you're, when you're young. I think I was in sixth grade. You know, you finally merged schools with like four different elementary schools. You got all these girls there. I was like, I need practice. I would take long, hot showers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Onward. I would stand up for the shower, I'd sit down. You sit down, and the, the, the faucet that was like there, like, you know, when you first start to, to the bath and you turn it to a shower, mm-hmm. but, uh, you, you practice on that boy. You know, it was smooth, mm-hmm. it was chrome, it was shiny. You said, I'm gonna give this guy a little tongue, pretend it's a girl, look at your own reflection, and it'd be like, close your eyes, just picture a nice moment. But, alright, that's all. Dang. Dang, bucko. That's one way to do it, man. Dang. And that's how you end up selling. uh, And that's how you end up selling bathroom equipment for the rest of your life, man. With that kind of love for the game right there. But yeah, I could understand what you're saying. See your reflection in something. And then you go kiss it. Now, if you're sucking on the front end of a of a of a faucet, that might be kind of homoerotic. You might be getting a little bit homoerotical right there, bro. You might meet a man. Hell, you might end up dating the Tin Man. You know, if somebody in the next room is watching Wizard of Oz, and even through the television, that Tin Man sees you sucking on the end of a friggin' dripping faucet, boy. <laughs> boy. That mad metal maniac's gonna pop right out of your screen, bruh. And he's gonna want his uh he's gonna want his chrome polish, daddy. Look, stay safe out there, man, wherever you are. I am saying that and thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that. That. Um Let's take another call, man. Let's take one more call that came in here to the hotline. I appreciate you guys being uh, so supportive. I'm excited about going to Maui in two weeks. If you have a friend on the island, tell them to get uh, to get that hitter, man. Grab some tickets. Um, what else? Yeah, I just need. I'm ready to have a little bit of break, man. I feel a lot of stress in my shoulders. I can't. It's like like a tangling that's in my shoulders and my neck. And I think I might be allergic to coffee too. So, you know me, dude. I got all the problems, baby. Oh, I'm wearing this Joe Musgrove today, too, son. Got this beautiful hitter right here, Pittsburgh Pirates. Shout out one of the best in the game right there. Gang, bro. Gang. Here we go. Hey, Theo. This is Amber from Illinois. I just wanted to call to address the zookeeper that was on in the last episode. So, I work for Ecological Restoration. And I think... If the zookeepers having some ethical dilemmas about working at the zoo, that ecological ecological restoration might be a good option for him because you're helping the animals. You're helping kind of improve the areas where they live and get rid of all the damage done by humans to the natural areas. And you're also, you know, still in 
the outdoors, you're not having to work inside or anything. You're still having a positive impact on the environment um, without all the ethical dilemmas because you don't have to see animals getting mistreated and things like that. Yeah, now look, I feel you there, and I appreciate the call. Last week we had a gentleman, he was really, you know, uh, he was coming to, having his come to Jesus moment about um, working at the zoo and not liking the system. But I'm ready to say this, that, uh, that, yeah, some animals get mistreated in zoos and things like that. I mean, I saw blackfish, and I don't know if you've seen that, but it's about, I guess, what if how they treat blackfish. And the shit is, I mean, that shit's, it's a little heavy, man. You know, it's like kind of like 12 years a swimmer, kind of. But this, um, but some animals learn dope shit, let's be honest. You got animals down there at SeaWorld and at uh, Wally World or whatever, they'll spin a, you know, spin a ball on their nose. None of these bastards out in nature are doing that shit. They fighting. I don't know if you've seen Planet Earth, but a lot of animals are out there beating each other's asses. Let's be honest. I'm not saying they're not beautiful and that they shouldn't be allowed to do it. But some animals are learning useful skills as well. There's not. It's not just a one-way street. But that is a great option, man. Ecological restoration. I say let animals go if we want. But don't be shocked you know what I'm saying? When little Bridget gets fucking clothesline by two orangutans and they want to be sexual or want to be nasty. Or, you know what I'm saying? Don't be, don't come crying then when your cousin gets fucking shanked by an angry otter, bro, with a sharp palm. When some angry otter swims by at the YMCA and fucking, you know what I'm saying? Clips your little kiddo's tendons. Don't be, oh, what happened? You can't have it all. There's a trade-off for everything. So next time you see a full-blown white seal at, you know, over there at Water Park, and he can uh, do the stanky leg, that ain't that bad, man. He ain't doing bad. But there's an option for you, young fella, that called last week, Eco Restoration, and thank you, young lady, for calling in. And that's where I think you sneak out into the wild and kind of make things better for animals and then sneak back. And you're a zookeeper, but you're kind of like on the side. So I'm curious to see. Maybe I don't know if humans will be around forever. We might be something that kind of comes and goes. And then animals can get back to whatever they were doing here. I bet they were dancing before we got here. Um, but... But I'll say this, dude, every now and then, you realize humans don't take that care, good at care of animals. And that's why you got to freaking slip little Charlie a piece of Nicorette at the park, baby. You feel me, boy? Charlie going to be getting buck every time he goes to the park now, boy. He going to be over there running over there behind the federal building, trying to bum a Winston off of somebody. Charlie! He's going to be doing one of them Zen packs with Jesse Lockwood and the gang. Thank you guys so much, man, for supporting this past weekend uh, and everything. You know, we got uh, some new merch stuff coming up soon. Um, and uh, what else is going on? A lot of neat stuff, man. Oh, we need a single mom for uh, coming up for New Jersey and for Oxon Hill, Maryland and for Newport News, Virginia. So if you have um, a friend who is a single mother, uh, we would like to uh, treat her out to a night out and, um, and take care of, uh, of her babysitter costs and, and make sure that she can have a night out of laughter. And uh, we want to thank our Patreoners for helping us support that program time and time again. Um, we keep doing our best, man. We keep doing our best. That's what we do, you know. That's what we do. You guys be good to yourselves, man. Just keep making it. I'm going to go out with that, with uh, Bishop Gunn, because I hope they do make it. I hope they can figure things out over there. Um, Man, it's a wild house. How, how, how we can have so much talent in us and have so much turbulence in us at the same time. 
It's wild to be on that balance. I'm amped up today, man. Gang, you guys be good to yourselves, man. This is Making It by Bishop Gunn. Mama pray for my restless soul. 